Good morning. Welcome to Church of the Resurrection in Hamilton, Ontario. To all those online that are tuning in, we hope you're having a holy and happy Christmas season. This is the first Sunday after Christmas. We're going to continue to celebrate the incarnation of our Lord through our worship, song, and prayer. If we haven't met before, my name is Reverend Stephen Blackmore, and I'm the, the rector, the priest here at Church of the Resurrection. And today we've got lots of folks involved in our worship. A special thanks to our tech team, our music team, and, uh, and all the others who have, uh, have helped to make this Christmas season so special, uh, this unique season uh, special for us. And today, uh, Reverend Leon will be presiding and celebrating the Eucharist, and Adam McNeil will be preaching. We hope you uh, do whatever you need to do today to help participate in the worship. You might wish to sing along. You might wish to light a candle where you are. Whatever you need to do uh, to enter into this time of praise and prayer. We'll begin by singing our opening carol. Let us pray. O God, the source of light and gladness, 
whose word has come among us in the holy child of Bethlehem. May the light of your presence brighten our lives and shine through our word and deed, so all may know the joy of Christmas this day and always. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now have our first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's church. Be to God. With you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother, Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, 
and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. I speak to you in the name of our incarnate Lord. Amen. Amen. Around this time last year, just a few days after Christmas, I was at home, probably eating chocolate, when I received the news that shocked and saddened so many of us. Our church building had been broken into. We weren't the only ones that had experienced this. A church just down the street had also been broken into. And similar to that church, there was a lot of broken glass, papers thrown around. But there were a few other more costly items that were in fact stolen. Thankfully, no one was in the building at the time of the intrusion and no one was hurt. The holy hardware was left undisturbed, and we were able to continue on with our worship the next day. Things could have been much worse, and we were thankful they weren't. And yet, I sense that many in our community certainly harbored feelings of confusion and anger. Why, why would somebody or Many people do this to a church right after Christmas. This house of prayer, which is home to so many, had been ransacked, and so we felt violated. I can also recall some other feelings too. There was a deep sense of sadness, not only for our community and the lost items, but also sadness, I think, for the intruder or the intruders. I wondered what was happening in the lives of the individual or the group of individuals that led them to break in and steal? Were they in some kind of desperate need? Were they experiencing some kind of suffering which manifested in their actions? Why? 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 It was like we went from the joy and the triumph of receiving the peace and light of Christ at Christmas and then immediately being jolted out of all the festivities and merrymaking to feelings of grief and fear and uncertainty. Perhaps this event in the life of this community can somehow serve as an opportunity for us to understand the uncomfortable elements of the Christmas story in a new way. Well, today we fast forward 40 days after Jesus' birth to what is known as the presentation of the Lord in the temple. It was a Jewish tradition that after 40 days of childbirth, the firstborn male must be brought before the Lord and a sacrifice must also be brought. Now, if you had money, you would bring a lamb. But we know Mary and Joseph, they were refugees, they were poor, and so they brought what was appropriate under the law, according to the laws of the Torah, which was a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now, onto the scene comes this very old man named Simeon. He is called righteous and devout. Now, Luke's gospel makes a point of telling us that the Holy Spirit rested on Simeon, and he had a particular role in finding the Messiah, finding the one who would unite and save his people. And he actually was told he would not die until he found the one he was searching for. And lo and behold, Simeon recognizes this baby Jesus 
as the Messiah, as the anointed one. And so, holding little 40-day-old Jesus in his arms, Simeon praises God with these words. Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. Well, this song is also known in church land as the Nunt Dimittis, a canticle which is sung in the evening time, and particularly at evensong. It's sung in the evening to mark the end of the day, because for Simeon, seeing the Messiah meant he could rest. Well, he could rest eternally. However, these beautiful words of praise very quickly become a bit unsettling. Simeon turns to Mary, Jesus' mother, and what does he give her but a warning? He speaks of the opposition that Jesus will face during his life, that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. The road, of head, or the road ahead for Jesus, yes, will be holy, but it will not be easy. We are then introduced to Anna, and Anna is a prophet who has always been in the temple. She has been praying and fasting and anticipating this very moment. Now, her praise of God takes the form of evangelism. We could say that Anna is the first evangelist. She goes out to share the good news with others that the Messiah, the anointed one, the light of the world, is here. I think what we need to hear in this story of the presentation of Jesus in the temple is that the light of the world, the arrival of the Messiah, means that change is on the horizon. Big change. Jesus, as we know, will begin, when he gets a little older, a ministry of radical hospitality, welcoming outcasts and sinners. He will call for a redistribution of wealth, He will challenge those in positions of religious and political leadership. He will perform miracles. He'll break some rules to live a life so committed to love of God and love of neighbor that those in power will be threatened and will even plot to have him killed. Yes, Simeon is right to give God praise, for this baby is the Messiah, the one who will bring light to all people. But make no mistake, when the mission of God is about bringing light and life to all people, emphasis on all, we begin to enter territory that the world is not very comfortable with. In a world where quality of life is reserved for some, God becomes human to make quality of life available for all. In a world where food and housing is affordable for some, God becomes human to demand it be affordable for all. In a world where basic human rights is given just to some, God becomes human to show the beauty and equality of every person. Spreading the light of Christ to all people, well, it's frankly countercultural, isn't it? Jesus knew, like us, a society where the rich get richer and the poor keep getting poorer. It's things like a global pandemic that really expose this reality. And so if the mission of the Messiah is to bring light to all people, it's it's no wonder he will be opposed. And yet, this is our good news. God became human, not to walk with some of us, but all of us. Not to love some of us, 
but all of us. Not to forgive some of us, but all of us. For God didn't come to earth to continue the status quo and make just some tweaks around the edges of the power structures of society which kept people in darkness. But God showed up to spread light to all. When I think about our break-in in the church building last year, I think about those feelings of anger, and they are justified. But I wonder how God may also be calling us to respond to that event in love. It's uncomfortable to consider how God's love and light is for those who have done harm as much as God's love and light is for us. Simeon's canticle of praise names God's light and salvation as prepared in the presence of all peoples. It's uncomfortable, it's countercultural. But this is our good news. God doesn't have a standard for love, it's a gift given freely. And sometimes, sometimes we don't have the strength individually to extend that love and light to those who have hurt us and done harm. And that is okay. This is why we follow Jesus in community, to carry one another and to lean on one another in order to spread that light of Christ as far as possible when we cannot on our own even to those for whom we might think of as undeserving and maybe unforgivable. And so I pray that we would contemplate this week how God's overwhelming generosity and gift of love in the baby Jesus is quite beyond our imagination, particularly as we continue to grapple with the COVID-19 pandemic. I wonder how God might be calling us to spread the light of Christ to others in a time of deep, deep need. So may we build a world that mirrors God's vision as we will see it unfold in the justice, hospitality, and love of Jesus of Nazareth. The light is here. So like Simeon, let us recognize it. And like Anna, let us share it. Amen. Our worship continued with the affirmation of faith. Let us now affirm the faith that draws us here. We believe in one God. Reconcile and make new the works in us and others by this Spirit. We trust in God, who are called to be the church, to, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Our response to the prayers today is, God of love, born on Christmas, hear our prayer. Christ, for whom there was no room in the inn, give courage to all who are homeless. Stir our hearts to become advocates for those living in poverty and to do our part in sharing with those in need. God of love, born on Christmas, hear our prayer. Christ, who fled into Egypt, give comfort to all refugees and displaced peoples. 
Be present to all victims of racism and those who fight for justice. And draw all restless hearts to find their home in you. God of love, born on Christmas, hear our prayer. Christ, who fasted in the desert, give relief to all who are starving. Bless food banks and shelters and all those serving the impoverished. Strengthen the hearts, minds, and bodies of all healthcare workers, medical researchers, and essential services providers as we continue to labor through this pandemic. God of love, born on Christmas, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Christ, who hung in agony on the cross, give strength to all who suffer. Remembering those who have asked for our prayers this week, Marilyn H., Frank, Fred and Verna, John and Sylvia, Norma, Dolores, Hazel, Molly, Pat, John P., John S., Gloria, Charlotte, Elsie, Pam, Judy, Faye, Joan, David, Janet, Diane, R., Mabel, Betty, Wayne, and Gary, and for Rosemary Capillary, who has died, and for her family and her friends that mourn, and for all those suffering the effects of COVID-19. God of love, born on Christmas, hear our prayer. In our church this week, we pray for Maurice and Dulcie James, bless Jarrett, John Kemmerich, and their families. In the diocese cycle of prayer, we pray for Mrs. Marianne Grant, administrative assistant. Jesus, Savior, Son of Mary, you know us and love us. You share our lives and hear our prayers. Be for us a living hope that lightens our hearts and fills us with your peace. Glory to you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able for the sharing, for the exchange of the peace. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also, and also with you.
Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you that you promise to be with us in bread and wine, to increase our joy and give us a taste of the new creation where the world is made new and all are made one, where peace and justice spring up like streams in the desert and where all know the fullness of life in you. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the living God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We praise and bless you, restless God, because you will not give up on us or on your vision for the future, for the silence of eternity. Your holy word was spoken in flesh, a child cradled in a manger, and you made your home with us. Jesus changed the lives of all he encountered, brought comfort and healing to the weak, and taught us how to live in peace. In his living and dying and rising again, you set us free to embrace the gift of your new creation. Therefore, we join our voices today with shepherds and magi to praise you in the song of the angel. night before he gave up his life, Jesus gathered with friends in an upper room to share a meal of love and promise. He took bread and gave you thanks. And when he had broken it, he gave it to them and said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the meal had ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and shared it with his friends and said, take and drink. This is my blood shed for you and for many so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. So now, on this holy day, we do as he once did. In gratitude for the fulfillment of your promise in the birth of Jesus the Christ, send your Holy Spirit on us and upon this bread and wine, that your grace may be born in us this day and expressed in our lives every day. Sustain and encourage us through this meal as we wait and watch, work, and pray for that day when all hunger shall be satisfied and all war shall cease, all fear be banished, and all darkness transformed by your glorious light. This we ask in the name of Jesus, the Word made flesh for the life of the world. And now, let us pray together as Christ has taught us. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. This is the table of the Lord ready for those who love God and those who want to love God more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have never been before, you who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed, come, because it is Christ who invites us to meet him here. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Creator of all, today you have united heaven and earth by becoming one with us. May we, who have shared in your love, also share in, in your eternal life. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the Magi, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of Christ's child be yours this Christmas. And may the blessing of God, the Holy Trinity, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Good morning, folks. I have a letter to read from the bishop. To the people of the Church of Resurrection, greetings to you at Christmas. I write to inform you that your rector, the Reverend Stephen Blackmore, will commence a doctor-recommended medical leave of absence from his work, effective January the 4th. This means that your rector will be fully absent from all responsibilities, and these arrangements will be reviewed at the end of January. Consequently, arrangements are being made for a part-time priest in charge during this medical leave of absence. We will work with your wardens on these arrangements and will ask them to communicate with you when those arrangements are confirmed. I join you in keeping the Reverend Stephen Blackmore in your thoughts and prayers. Sincerely, Susan, Bishop of Niagara.
love of Christ with the world. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.